This podcast episode is brought to you by Audible.com. To receive a free book of your choice, please visit www.audibletrial.com slash mysticaccess. Enjoy! Welcome to the Mystic Access Podcast, where the magic is in learning. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Mystic Access Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Kim. I'm the good witch. And I'm the bad witch. (laughs) And in case you haven't noticed already, we're going to have lots of lovely spooky things going through this podcast. We're just giving Chris free reign today to let it all out and play all the spooky things he wants during the course of this, because this is our podcast before Halloween, so you get to deal with a little bit of extra spookiness. Exactly. And speaking of spookiness, well, it's not really spooky, or it could be, depending on how it turns out. (laughs) We have an upcoming class on October 24th, which is a Thursday. And the reason that we're not doing one on the last Thursday of the month is because it is Halloween the 31st. So we're breaking our rule of the last Thursday of the month, so... If you have last Thursday of the month Mystic Access on your calendar, that's not going to work this month. So it's the 24th, just and it's pro- going to be fun. Just a programming note, too. November's going to fall the same way. We're going yes. ha- We're not having a class on the last Thursday of November because... It's Thanksgiving! Exactly, and I'm not going to be around to... Yeah, no way. I'm going to be watching parades and, you know, things like that, and eating ham and mashed potatoes and stuff. So, our current class, that one that we should be concerned about right now, is on October 24th, and that is the Your Choice of Voice class, and this is where we're going to talk a little bit about text-to-speech voices and demonstrate some text-to-speech voices on different platforms, maybe Mac, maybe iOS, Android, and Windows to give you a flavor of the different voices that are out there and where you can get one. I actually discovered a couple of days ago a new Android text-to-speech voice that I didn't know about and I downloaded it and played with it and while it's not the best sounding voice it's pretty darn good actually. It's really fun to see what's out there and fun to find out what you can get. So if you're bored with the voices you already have, or if you're even the least bit curious about what is available for your platform, come join us. Come hang out with us. And here's a note. If you're on iOS and you think Nuance is the only thing on the block, well, you're kind of right, but you're kind of not. Because if you're using programs like Voice Dream Reader, for instance, you can get you, some pretty good sounding voices. You voice. sure can. You sure can. And we will we will talk more about that. So don't be discouraged if you're an iOS user and thinking, oh, this doesn't apply to me. Totally, totally applies to you. So come hang out with us. We'd love to share lots of voices and virtual people, <laughs> virtual text-to-speech people with you. The next thing we want to talk about was our Word class that we recently had. This was a class that was about an hour and... 20 minutes or something like that. And it was pretty well attended. We were very happy. It was very well attended. Yeah, we were thrilled with the number of you who were interested in it. And thank you for your kind comments and for showing up. And, you know, we really appreciate it. We're going to make sure that more of you get the chance to enjoy this class, however. So if you missed it live and you weren't able to come and you thought, crap, I really wanted to be part of that class. Well, you can because we are going to release it in the Mystic Access shop for $15, and you can have your chance to listen to. Yes, it's going to be, as usual, fully DAISY navigable, so you're going to get both DAISY and MP3 versions of the class, and you're also going to get a document with resource links in it, and these are going to be resource links for helpful websites or helpful pages that are going to give you hotkeys and information on Microsoft Word from all different platforms. Totally. We want to make sure that you get the resources you need. So even if stuff isn't talked about 
extensively in class, even if we just gloss over something, look in your resources that we're going to send you because we're going to make sure that you have adequate resources to at least get you started with whatever platform you're using. So we'd love to have you if you're interested. Purchase it. And it's, as Chris said, Daisy within an inch of its life. And you will be able to reference exactly what you need within the audio. So thank you all for joining. We will definitely be having lots more classes like this because we had a very excellent response to this one. So we appreciate you showing up and we'll be anxious to share it with more of you. Absolutely. Speaking of sharing things, I have a question. Okay. If you could only have one thing in your trick-or-treat bucket this year, what would it be? I would probably have to say a big Hershey bar. Hershey, yum. Hershey's are good. How about you? I think I would want a huge Twix. Okay. And that's it? I'm a Twix fanatic. No candy corn or any of that kind of stuff? Well, that was hypothetical. I said if you could only have one thing in your tree oh, bucket. Oh, okay. It was your very favorite. But if, yeah, if I could have more, I like the candy corn, but I really love those little pumpkins. I only allow myself one bag of that stuff a year, though, because it's so bad for you. So I get myself one bag, and I say, this is my one bag of candy corn and little candy pumpkins, because I love them. You know what I used to do when I was a kid with those candy pumpkins? <laughs> I'm afraid. I used to bite the stems off and eat the stems and then eat the pumpkin. And then eat the pumpkin? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I always swore that the candy corn and the pumpkin taste different. They're made out of the exact same terrible sugary confection, but I've always sworn they taste different. Yes, they do. I think they do. I totally think they do. So we know you guys are going to probably have some goodies in your treat bags. Either you're going to steal from the communal candy dish that you've got for your trick-or-treaters. Damn, we know it. We know it. Don't try to deny it. We know how this stuff works (laughs) because we do it. Or you're going to steal from your kids' treat bags. We understand. <laughs> it happens. We have to have our fix because of the time of year. I know, what happened? I know somebody who was going trick-or-treating one year with their brother. It's not me. And they walked up to a house, and there was a big bowl of candy on the, uh, you know, says there was a sign that says take one. So... What these people decided to do is they decided to take the whole thing and dump oh. it into their bags. And they walked away, and they heard Father. Oh. And Father said, put the candy back, you guys are done. Not only put the candy back, but put your candy in. So that Halloween was not a happy camper for said person. No, definitely not. That's what happens when you become too gluttonous on Halloween. I'm sure all of us have ought to do that if we see that. I know I probably, I'm not going to say I'm an angel or would be an angel at whatever, eight, nine, ten years old. If I found a big old thing of candy, I probably would have done the same thing. I don't think I would have. I, I had a twingy little heart. It wouldn't have allowed me to do that kind of thing. Not for long. I would have had to have like told on myself or something. I, w- I would have been awake at night. Well, speaking of being gluttonous around Halloween... What happens when that gluttony catches up with you? In other words, what happens when you wake up on, say, November 1st, and you say, oh, no. (laughs) You say, I just ate that whole bag of candy and shouldn't have? I just ate that whole bag of candy and shouldn't have. Well, guess what? We are here to help. (laughs) Because we both have a goodie that we would like to tell you about that is not edible and will assist you to burn some of those candy calories that you have slammed in your face (laughs) over Halloween festivities. Absolutely. And the thing that I'm going to talk about is an under-the-desk elliptical. Now, I bought one of those bike desk things, and I thought it was the same thing, but it's not. And the bike was the most uncomfortable thing that you'd ever want to use, as bikes normally are. But what this under-the-desk elliptical does is it will allow you to pedal while you work. So you're sitting in your nice, comfortable chair, and you are pedaling. And it is a QB, and it's spelled C as in Charlie, U as in Uniform, B as in Bravo, I as in India, I as in India again, Junior, Desk elliptical. 
And one thing that's kind of neat about this is it was very, very, very easy to set up. There were literally four screws. I read a review where the person said two screws, but they must have had two screws loose or something because <laughs> they didn't put the four screws in. And the screws are there to hold the pedals in. And the pedals actually, if you want to put them on, they're very, very easy to put on, but you have to put them on a certain way or they're not going to work. And what you want to do is the pedal itself is pretty big and it looks like it has a ring around three of the four edges. So it's rectangular. And if you thought that the part that doesn't have the ring on it was to go towards the inside of the device, that would be incorrect. So the part that doesn't have the, the kind of ring or ledge goes on the outside of each side of the pedal. So that's how you put it on. And what I did is I flipped them upside down and I just kind of let the floor hold the pedal to the arm because the arm can flip back too. So I let the arm and the pedal touch each other and the floor was literally holding the pedal to the, uh, to the arm while I was able to screw it in. So instead of using two hands, one to hold it and then possibly move the, the pedal while I was screwing it in with the other hand, I just let the floor do my dirty work. And on the front, there's a display that I can't use that allows you to check your calories and stuff like that. I just didn't even bother pulling the plastic off of that. But if you feel closer to you, there's a handle that you can actually pick this thing up and carry it somewhere else. Now, it's not the lightest thing in the house to carry around, but it's definitely doable. You can move it from room to room. And on the front closest to you, there is a knob that you can turn and that will either lower the intensity or raise the intensity of how hard you need to pedal. So you can change that. You could, you could do it for five minutes a day. You can do it for eight hours a day. You can do it when you think about it. But I've only had it, as I've said, for probably about 24 to 36 hours. And when I first started to use it, you totally can feel that it's working. And they say that it will work the muscles in your legs and your calves and your, your waist and your stomach and stuff like that. And it really does. Yeah, it's nice to have something that you can use all day, you know, or whenever you want that's really convenient. Because if it's sitting there at your desk, you have less excuse. Yes, you do. You can always take your feet and put them up and use it as a footrest as well. Well, you totally could, yeah. But it's nice and silent. Like, I've been on FaceTime with you, and you can hear it, but it's just barely. I wouldn't use it when I was, like, taking orders or anything, but... You really could, but... You, you could. You, 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 if you can walk and chew gum, then maybe you can do that. But Well, maybe you could, but I'm not entrusting you guys' credit cards to, to doing the elliptical. Walking and chewing gum? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, no. But it sounds like a really cool concept. I'm actually the one that found it, and I told Chris about it. And I said, hey, I think this is what you're actually looking for. And he bought it. <laughs> yeah, you have to make sure that your desk can withstand you pedaling underneath it. And you want to make sure that if you have a keyboard tray, which I don't have, you want to make sure that your legs will be able to clear that keyboard tray. Totally, yeah. So you may want to check on some things prior to purchasing, but we'll put the link in. You guys can check it out and enjoy it. And it's fairly expensive. Yeah, it was like $200, $200 $250, something like that. So that's just something to note in advance. If you're looking for a cheaper option that also has really cool results, I was telling people in a Facebook group that I'm part of about this months ago when people were pitching a fit over it because, like me, they didn't realize something like this existed. I live in a one-story house, and as a result, I've always thought I could do more cardio during the day if I had stairs. And, of course, I don't have stairs. You know, I don't want one of those huge stair steppers because I have nowhere to put it. My mom used to have one of those back in the day. And it was cool, but it was big. I mean, it was huge. It wasn't something you could, like, fold up and put away and then pop back up and work it. You know, it just it wasn't practical. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if they had something little like that? And I went on Amazon, and I found something. 
It's by a company called Sunny Health and Fitness. And it's Sunny like a woman's name, S-U-N-N-Y, Health and Fitness. And it's called an Adjustable Twist Stepper. And mine happens to be pink. So what this is, is essentially a stair stepper without the handles. So if back in the 90s, you too had a stair stepping machine or a stair climbing machine, you probably remember what they were like. They had handles, and I think you could move the handles like back and forth as you stepped. So you could move one handle one way and one handle the other way, and then you'll be moving your feet at the same time. Well, this is that without the handles. <laughs> so what you might want to do is just have something near you, a countertop or something where if you need to reach out and balance you can. I might leave the tips of my fingers really lightly on a surface next to me while I use it, just to make sure I don't fall off. And you can adjust the intensity. There's a knob kind of between your feet. When you get it, there really isn't much assembly required to it. I seem to remember putting some kind of strap or pad or something on it. I could be completely wrong about that. I know there was quite a bit of screw adjustment available. So depending on how technically you are, you may want to have the manual nearby and have it read either by Ira or by a friend or whatever and figure out what you're supposed to do. Essentially, it's just a matter of getting some screws adjusted and getting your resistance where you want it and kind of learning how things work. So once you get that done, you're essentially ready to go. What's really nice about it is once you've got it adjusted, it is great cardio. So I think it has a display on it. I don't think I have any batteries in my display because, frankly, I can't use it. And unfortunately, there's no Bluetooth app or anything like that you can connect with. I mean, this is a $50 device. It's not going to give you tons of stuff like that. But it is very well made. It seems like a really, really substantial thing. And I've had nothing but good results using it. What's cool about it is it's not just a stair stepper. In other words, it's not just moving you up and down. When you move, those steps actually twist you around a little bit. So you will feel it. <laughs> you will feel it in your glutes. You'll feel it in your legs and your thighs, your hips. You will totally, totally feel it. So it's great. I mean, even now I've been using it for a while. And 10 minutes is, whew, that's pretty much the max that is going to happen on that thing because it is tremendous cardio. It's really awesome. It's become one of my favorite little workout tools because I really like it. I really like how it makes me feel, and I really like the fact that now I have stairs. <laughs> now, my watch doesn't always count them as such, but it gives me really good cardio, so I'm not complaining too much, but it's fun. Yeah, my watch doesn't count mine either, and that you mentioned Bluetooth after I purchased mine, it still wouldn't have changed my decision. But after I purchased mine, I found out there's a pro model of my device for $150 more. It has Bluetooth. It can synchronize to your watch or your health app. It also has iOS and Android apps. Not having the pro version, I don't know how or if the apps are accessible. Yeah, that's always the issue when you're trying to get a new piece of equipment. You're like, is this even going to work? It's very much a crapshoot. I've actually got a big elliptical, a stand-up elliptical that has Bluetooth and it has a, an app and all that stuff. And I just never bother with the Bluetooth and the app. I just don't. So I don't even know if mine would even work with the health app. But the pro version of the one that I'm talking about today does. So these are a couple tools that we wanted to share with you that we have that we can recommend from personal experience that can help you to work off the calories from that Halloween haul. <laughs> now, that being said, I'm just about to tempt you some more because in the show notes, I'm going to link to one place that I have really awesome, yummy experiences with called Fat Witch Bakery. So if you live in New York City, you can go there and you can actually hang out in person. And they make brownies and all kinds of lovely things and hot chocolate. So they go all out for Halloween because they're called the Fat Witch Bakery. So you can check them out online. I've ordered from them online and had really great results. They make really yummy things. I'm also going to send a link to an article from Town & Country that I found about other goodies that you can also order online. So this podcast will be out in time for you to hopefully get that order in by Halloween if you'd like to order something yummy for yourself. So I won't talk more about that here, but there are some really decadent things in the article that I will share in the show notes. You know what I like to do when I'm eating 
candy and brownies and stuff. What? I like to read books. Cool. Yes. This podcast episode is sponsored by Audible.com. And one of the things that I've done with my Audible membership, because it's Halloween, I like to read scary stories around this time of the year. And there's two that I read using Audible. And for those that don't know, Audible is a website that you can be a member and you can download one or two audio books. And they're full, unabridged audio books. They're kind of like Bard books, but you might not be able to find the same books at Bard or Bookshare or what have you. But they used to have 100,000 titles. Now they have between 400,000 and 500,000 titles that you can choose from. But the two books that I recently read is one is called Camp Red Moon by R.L. Stein. And it's about a camp. And that's about all I'm going to say. It's, it's a bunch of scary stories revolving around a summer camp called Red Moon. And I really liked it. I ate it up in a day. And that book is fully dramatized. They have sound effects and different voices and different people speaking the different roles. And it was really nice. I like that. And the other book that I read, because of it being Halloween, I actually found the Halloween 2018 40 Years Later book. That was the official movie adaptation for that movie in 2018. And as somebody who's actually never seen the Halloween movies, I was kind of interested what it was about. And I did go through that one very, very quickly. Is it 40 years later? It's 40 years later, yes. Wow, that's a long time ago. Yeah, they were talking about 1978... And then there was a Halloween thing in 1998, and then there was a Halloween. There's a couple of other ones. Yeah, I remember the one from 98, and that's why I was thinking, wait, has it been 40 years? <laughs> it's been 40 years, because oh. that would have been 2018. So, And I did recently, this goes off the beaten track, but I did recently watch a couple of the movies, and I personally like the book better. <laughs> I find that the books are almost always better than the movies, with a very few exceptions that I would name if you were talking to me one-on-one, I would tell you that the book is always better than the movie. And how about you? What have you done with your Audible subscription? I love Audible. And one of the things that I love a lot now is that last year in 2018, they introduced something called Audible Originals. And I think they actually had them prior to 2018. But what actually happened was they allowed you to get two a month as part of your Audible subscription. So you might be paying 15 bucks a month for your one Audible book, but you also get two Audible Originals, and you get to select from a group of six every month. And I've had a lot of fun with those. I've really enjoyed them. Some of them are very dark, and some are very playful. Many of them are dramatized. And the, one of the very first ones I got was a really fantastic adaptation of Emma by Jane Austen, because I'm a big Jane Austen fan. And... That's a lot of fun. And, of course, you can get these. You can pay for them. So if you can't get them for free anymore, you can go find them. So if you look up Emma, you can find the Audible original version that I got. Chris just got, and I think I got it too, a new version of Treasure Island that was an Audible original as well. It's all dramatized with music and things like that. I think it's one of the most fun parts of my Audible subscription because you never know what's going to be available from month to month. And it's just fun. It's really enjoyable to see what they offer. I think only one month I didn't get them. I thought, oh, there's really nothing here that interests me. But generally, I have. And it's very interesting to see what's offered, what genres it's in. It's kind of like the Amazon First Reads, if you get that with your Prime subscription. You never quite know what's going to be available to choose from. But it's very fun to find out. I try to get things from Audible that aren't available on Bard already. Now, sometimes, of course, the exact same book with the exact same narrator (laughs) will show up after I bought it on Audible, and that's just kind of the way these things work. But occasionally, like right now, I'm considering when I get my next credit, Julie Andrews has a new book coming out. And 
I'm pretty sure she does the narration. Now, my luck, it'll come out on bar the moment I buy it. But her first book, which is kind of the story of her childhood, is already available on Audible with her narration, whereas with Bard, it's someone else's narration. So sometimes, if you want to hear the person read their own book, it's worth getting it from Audible because that version will be available and not always available from Bard. So it's very fun. It's very fun to see what's out there, what's available. Certainly the selection of stuff you can get from Audible is much bigger than what you can get from Bard. So if you're into human narrated, Audible may be the way to go. But yes, it's lots of fun. You have completely accessible apps via Android, iOS, and Fire OS. And of course, you can use it on Mac, PC, and you can use it on your stream. <laughs> you know, if you have a stream or a trick, something like that, you have the ability to use it there. So lots of ways to use it and tons and tons of books. One thing that I like about the Audible service is sometimes I will start a book on my iPad and then I'll pick it back up on my iPhone or Android device and then I might just decide for whatever reason that I want to ask my A-L-E-X-A to read my book. And the beauty of doing it this way is that you don't have to find where you were. It synchronizes the last position of where you were, which is very, very handy. So if you want to get there, you can go to audibletrial.com slash mystic access. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E-T-R-I-A-L dot com slash M-Y-S-T-I-C A-C-C-E-S-S. And you get a free book of your choice, and you get to keep it even if you don't continue on with the subscription. You know what goes really well with books? Food? But we already talked about food. <laughs> well, food too, but something else that goes really well with books, especially this time of the year. Okay. Warmth. Warmth. Cool. Don't you love to be cozy, though, with a good book, either curled up with a good cup of hot chocolate or coffee or tea, snuggled up in something? Be yes. really warm and toasty on these chilly fall or winter mornings or evenings because the chill is coming. I do too. And we want to revisit, which we don't really do in this podcast, but we're going to revisit something that I shared years ago with you guys because it is still relevant. You can still find amazing things by this brand. And I want to share about something that will help keep you warm on these fall and winter days and nights while you read your book and eat your Halloween haul. <laughs> so here we go. Welcome to a blast. From the past. I want to talk to you guys about getting cozy for the winter. And if you live in a climate as I do that gets fairly cold, we have had our first frosts now, and it's been down in the 30s here at night. And I needed a new space heater because I have very drafty rooms in my house. It's not a large house, but it has drafty rooms in it. And I thought, you know, I need to replace my space heaters in my bedroom and in the office. I went on a quest for space heaters, and actually, my mommy found the one that I'm going to talk to you guys about. And it turned out to be so nice and so accessible. She called me, and she goes, hey, I found you a heater. I'm like, you did? She's like, yeah, because she knew I was looking for one. So go figure. That worked out so nicely, and I'm very excited to share this with you guys because it's nicer than the ones I currently get. I tend to be kind of cheap and buy stuff, and it'll last me three years or something. <laughs> then it'll conk out, and I'll have to go buy a new one. But what do you expect for a $40 heater? You know, you get three winners out of it. Okay, fine. This is in the same price point, generally speaking. I think it's going to be a much better investment. It's by a company called Lasko, L-A-S-K-O. And the model number is CT16550, and there will be a link to it in the show notes. It's a ceramic heater. It's about 16 inches tall. The top face of this heater does not have raised buttons, so think of a microwave. Oftentimes you'll find buttons kind of like these. They're indented. You kind of have to press a little harder with your fingertip in order to find them. And there are three buttons on top in a vertical row. As I said, it's 16 inches tall. The back is kind of rounded, a little bit barrel-shaped. And then the front where the ceramic heating element is, is rectangular with rounded corners. So it's very sleek. It's very nice. Apparently, this one is black with a little bit of gray on it. So it's quite nice looking. It's plastic, but of course, the front here is ceramic where your heat will come out. And the buttons in the vertical row on top, 
I'm going to start furthest from me are the on off and high low button. Under that is the oscillation button where you toggle whether or not you want it to oscillate. And the bottom button is your temperature button. If you are using the heater itself to set your settings, and I say that because there is a remote with this heater, the buttons work a little differently than the remote buttons do. At least the first one does. The top button is power and will also, when you turn it on, will put you at the high heat setting, which is 1500 watts. If you press it again, you will move to the low heat setting. And if you press it again, it will power off. The next button, as I said, toggles whether or not you want to oscillate to move back and forth and distribute your heat a little more evenly throughout the room. And the third button is your temperature button. Now, I don't recommend actually doing the thermostat temperature setting with the heater itself because I've found for me, but it isn't quite as accurate. You may put it on a setting and think if you turn it back on, it's going to be still on that setting, but it isn't necessarily. <laughs> so it's a little easier to do that with the remote control. But first, before I show you the remote, I just want to turn it on for you. To let you hear it, that's high heat. And it only takes it just a second to get warm. This does have safety features. I'm going to turn on oscillation. Again, notice the beeps, and it immediately begins oscillation. So the buttons, are on, the buttons are on the roof, kind of like if buttons you are on the roof. Yep. You're thinking it was a house. Yeah, if you're thinking of it as a house, the buttons are on the roof. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely, and they're all in a vertical row, or a vertical column, <laughs> to be more exact. So that's how loud it gets. It doesn't get any louder than that. It's very comfortable in terms of loudness i really can't take really loud stuff it makes me a little crazier than normal which isn't very good especially when i'm trying to work and this is the quietest one i've owned so you can hear it but i don't find it distracting at all it's not obnoxious the remote actually can sit there's a little indented rectangular spot on the back where you can carry it so it's kind of like a built-in carrying handle except it's a you know, a slot where you can fit your hand. And it's right under the top, so it's probably mm, two, two and a half inches down from the top. So if you slide your hand around to the back, and the, as I mentioned, the back's a little barrel-shaped, slide your hand down the rounded portion, you're going to feel kind of an open spot. And you can pick it up and you can carry it around. And it's not very heavy at all. It's just a few pounds. So you can easily carry it around, move it from place to place. And just under where your hand would sit, where your fingers would be, on this handle carrying spot, there's a little rectangular indention and your remote hangs there. So if I take the remote off this little indention, it's got a actually a little carrying thing on the back where it will actually slide in that little slot on the back of the heater. So it just kind of slides into place and it hangs there. It's not magnetized or anything like that, but it does hang there. On the top of the remote, I'm holding it with the sensor furthest away from me. The sensor is kind of in the middle of, I guess, what would be the front face of the remote. So it's very noticeable. You can find it very easily. And now I'm going to actually tell you in terms of columns. So I'm going to go up and down. There's six buttons on it. And I'm going to move from left to right in column order. So the first button on top, on the left-hand side, far all the way to the left, is the high heat button. And right under that, in the next row, is the low heat button. In the next column, you'll find the oscillation button and the power button. Now, on the remote, power is just power. Off. On. And then on the far right, the far right column, you have plus and minus. And this will set your temperature. So this does have a thermostat on it. And you can move from 65 degrees to 85 degrees. And there's also a max degree. So here's the cool thing. Let's say I want to set my room to 65. I can go and I'm going to press my minus key multiple times. Notice it's no longer beeping at me. That means we're at 65. I'm going to go the other way. 70, 75, 80, 85, max. Oh, no max. That's interesting. Max might only be available through, I'm going to go 80, 75, 70, 65. Max might only be available through the button on top. Oops, and I just dropped the remote. That's real good. <laughs> but it's sturdy. Oh, that's another cool thing that actually dropping it reminded me to tell you on the back of the remote where you put in your two triple a batteries there is actually a screw a little bitty screw that you can screw into place to keep the back of your remote from coming off when you drop it like i just did <laughs> so that's kind of fun so i've got this thing now on 65 degrees so when the room is at 65 degrees 
it's going to shut itself off. That only works when your heat is on high. If your heat is on low, the temperature function doesn't work. So I'm actually going to reset it because I'm not entirely sure I had it on high. I think I did, but I'm going to double check. So turning it on, I'm going to turn on oscillation too because I like to oscillate and I'm going to go. And I just press my minus button. So I should be on 65 and probably by the time we end, it's going to have shut off. So that's a really cool thing that I really, really like being able to set it for a particular degree and just letting it shut off whenever it wants. So it's very energy efficient in that way. Oh, see, there it goes. It's off. So we are now at 65 degrees. I'm just going to put the remote back in its little slot for the moment. Here we go. So now I'm hands free again and we'll see if it comes back on before we finish. When my mom got it, she was out shopping and she actually bought it for me and brought it back to me. So she paid 35 bucks for it. On Amazon right now, I think it's 49 So it's a little more on Amazon than what she paid at Sam's Club for it. You might find it at different places for slightly different prices, but I'm anxious to actually get me another one because I really like it. So I definitely want one for the office as well. So this is kind of a tower style heater. The warmth it gives out is awesome. I'm very happy with it. As I said, the accessibility is very, very easy. So you can see that I just set it to 65 degrees. The room is 65 degrees. I can keep it at 65 for as long as I want. Then if you want to change your temperature, what you can do is just turn the power on and you've gotten rid of that setting. So if you want it at 65, you can just leave it. You don't have to touch it. And if you want to turn it back on and say go to either low heat or change it to 70 or whatever you want to do, or just change that setting, turn that setting off, you can do that just by turning on your power on your heater. Can you not just press plus and change it to 70? Okay, so I press plus. It should be on 70 now. Let me, yep, it was. So yeah, you can do that too. It's going to come back on. So I don't want 70 though. I want 65. So I just put it back on 65. So yes, you can do it that way as well. Just by pressing your plus button. That's what I thought. That works as well. Hopefully I can get back to my 65 and they'll turn off here in a second again. Yep, there it goes. Right on cue. It's very nice. I really like it. I would say that that's very cool, but it's not. It's very hot or can be very hot. It can be very hot. It's very cozy, though. That's for yes. definite sure. Yes. Very cozy. And I'm still using the same one that I used. What was that? How long ago was that? Three years? Three years ago, yes. Was that three years ago? My goodness. Mm -hmm. So it's still going strong. I just took it out, I think, yesterday. It was the first day that I've used it this fall and winter. And it is still going strong and working just as great as it did back then. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us on this podcast episode. And happy Halloween. Absolutely. Bye. Bye. Ah! The preceding podcast is a presentation of Mystic Access, where the magic is in learning. If you are blind or visually impaired and desire to discover how our comprehensive products and services may support and empower your assistive technology journey, we welcome your visit at www.mysticaccess.com. Have a question or wish to place an order via phone? Call us at 716-543-3323. If you have something to share about this podcast episode, press 4 to reach our Mystic Access podcast comment line. Email us at info at mysticaccess.com. Connect with us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mysticaccess and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash mysticaccessempower. Would you like to spread the word about our podcasts? Your friends and colleagues may listen and subscribe at www.mysticaccesspodcast.com. If you enjoy our episodes, consider leaving us an iTunes rating and review. Your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks for spreading the word, and thanks for being a listener. We hope you enjoyed this episode.